Good morning, all honorable guests, members of the university, the principal, senior leadership team, professors, lecturers, the chancellor, anybody else that I may have missed. But most importantly, good morning to all of you, the graduating class of 2020. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can relax. I'm not running for president again. Two years was enough, and legally I can't anymore. But I share my experience as, despite having the honor to give many graduation ceremonies, this is the one that I'm most nervous about. And that's because graduation is a very special moment in any circumstance. And I will come back to this point later. But in this case, we have waited, you have waited, all of our families and friends have waited for this moment for an extra two years. So I've had all that extra time to prepare this speech. And in classic student fashion, I've left it all till late. But I promise to use the teachings of our university and our lecturers when we were writing our dissertations and our reports to help me structure this speech. I'll be, this will be the introduction and the abstract followed by the methodology where we'll thank the university and our family and friends. Then there will be evidence and findings where I will talk about how amazing you are as the students. And then there will be the conclusion. My only request is if we could all clap extra hard and laugh extra loud so the cameras and the microphones pick it up and we make this graduation worth the wait. So I want to begin by thanking everyone from the university. From being a student to serving and supporting students, I've had the rare opportunity of seeing both perspectives. And I am so proud to say that I have been part of an institution where the lecturers, the professors, the academic, non-academic staff, our personal tutors, everyone has taken such an effort and has been so determined to deliver the best possible student experience, no matter what challenges have come, no matter what challenges the world has faced over the past few years. From adding notes under our slides when we weren't paying attention or when we just didn't go to lectures, to circling and highlighting the most important parts so we don't memorize all 200 slides, to creating practice questions which magically turned up on the exam paper when we needed the marks the most, we are really grateful for all that you have done. And so students, please join me in giving a massive round of applause and thank you firstly to the university and all its members. <laughs> Let's now take this moment to appreciate all the support we have received from our family and friends and the so many more that we have gained as we have gone along this journey. What started as a simple path of our education has had so many wonderful and life-changing detours, all because of them. We learned the true meaning of friendship and companionship. Some of you didn't just meet your clinical and lab partners, but you met your partners in life. We learned the true meaning of family and how they will always be by your side, no matter how tough it gets as we tried to learn about the cranial nerves, but we learned how to get on each other's nerves. We learned about the true meaning of flavor and how no amount of takeout or YouTube tutorials can ever replace that home-cooked meal. But most importantly, we learned about the true meaning of unconditional love and sacrifice. As I stand here today, as a proud Pakistani immigrant and from an immigrant family, I look around the room and I see that I'm not alone. It is so heartwarming and it's such a pleasure to see so many families from so many different parts of the world, different cultures, different communities, all here to celebrate one another. And I can say from first-hand experience that I acknowledge and appreciate all the sacrifices all of our families and friends have had to make so we could be here at this stage. So students, please join me again in thanking our families and friends for all they have done for us.
So now we've done the thank yous for the university, the families and friends. Let's talk about the part everybody cares about, which is why you are all so amazing. To be honest, this part of the speech took me the longest to prepare, and that's not because you are not amazing, but because you are a bit too amazing. How do I find the right quote or the right public figure or something to inspire a group of people who are already so successful and so accomplished? And from this, I started to reflect, who am I actually delivering this speech to? And I realized that I'm standing here in front of students who have gone through some of the most rigorous academic courses and challenges that any students have had to face. And on top of this, you've had to go through wars, political unrest, climate change, protests, the pandemic. You were the first to go through these challenges. And so I realized that today, the inspiring story is not mine or of any other individual, but each and every single one of you here today is a champion and is a hero in their own right and in their own story. So now let's give it up for the students. I would like to conclude this speech with one final request. Let's not look at today as the end of a chapter, journey, or path, words that I've realized I've used too much in the speech already. But let's look at this as the beginning of an even more successful, even more exciting, and even more amazing years ahead. And in the words of Maya Angelou, I want you to remember as you continue to serve others. They may not remember your name, but they will always remember how you make them feel. Thank you so much for listening. It has been an honor to serve as your president. Congratulations to you again. Thank you very much for that, Omar. I think you've really set the tone for, of course, what is a joyous day. I know it is formality, and we have the University of London Mace, but fundamentally, we should be very happy. So, graduates, parents, supporters, friends, our chair of council, colleagues, guests, and our honorary graduate, Agri Burke, who we're going to hear from later, who is a psychiatrist that's made a huge impact, and has been known to St. George's since the 1970s and 80s and beyond. Graduation ceremonies, as I say, should be joyous and are a celebration. And it was awful that we were denied this opportunity. And for you as a cohort, perhaps you wondered if this day would actually ever come, but here it is. And we have seven ceremonies this month to reflect three cohort years. And it's wonderful to have you here. Of course, perhaps not everybody is here, and I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge what COVID has taken from many of us, not just in terms of our lives, but also many loved ones. There may be empty seats here in the auditorium or people missing from your wider community life or family. And I'd just like to say we do acknowledge, as Omar has already, the incredibly difficult circumstances which had to be combined with study at this particular time. And so we're very proud of the journey that you've taken to get here and the triumph in spite of everything. In March 2020, we were forced to work remotely on the whole and virtual meetings and online lessons became the new normal. Everybody had to find a way to cope with these circumstances. And for many, it was by doing. In these sometimes felt the darkest of times, the St. George's community and its frequently cited family feel shone through. There were so many activities undertaken 
And an example of this is 170 students help distribute food and self-care items throughout the hospital and beyond. Many demonstrated selflessness and turned to serving others. It's not tight, appropriate to name check everybody, but I want to say we do acknowledge what you did and what a difference it made. Also, from the point of view of the university and its research, COVID gave us an opportunity to really contribute through our specialism in infectious disease. It directly helped the world through the crisis, the biggest pandemic that there had been in our generation. Researchers from our Vaccine Institute played a vital role in the development of COVID vaccines, acting as a site for major trials of the Moderna, Oxford, Novavax and Imperial vaccines. And the Institute's work continues and we are currently leading the world's first Omicron-specific trial. Last month, we welcomed, alongside the hospital, the now former Health and Social Care Secretary, Sajid Javid, to Tooting. On his visit, he showcased the £1 billion government partnership investment with the vaccine manufacturer, Moderna. He chose to come to St George's, in part because of this world-leading work in vaccines, being led by our professor, Paul Heath. Earlier in the same year, St George's worked alongside obstetrician Professor Asma Khalil to show that vaccination during pregnancy, which was a very contentious issue, had important benefits. It demonstrated a reduction of the tragedy of stillbirth by 15% and importantly was shown to be safe for both mother and baby. We are continuing to find new ways to contribute and learn from the COVID response. Our enterprise team has recently teamed up with a London-based business looking at masks that, as the wearer breathes in and out, can detect COVID positivity or negativity. I think you all know that our guiding mission has been to pursue excellence in academic medicine, healthcare and science. And that's been consistent for many years. And many of these aspects were clear long before the C word was everywhere. Research excellence is measured. And we were delighted when the research excellence framework that looks across the nation and in an external peer review fashion, we got our results. It's always an anxious time waiting for results, as I think the students will recall. But we did very well. There were 129 institutions ranked, and we were absolutely thrilled to become joint eighth in that. So we had punched far above our relative size. This is because of our impact. Impact means that discoveries go beyond theory and actually have an influence on life and practical benefit. We have a footprint that means that 91% of our research outputs were rated as world leading, not nationally leading, but world leading. And it's testament to the focus and outstanding researchers we have at St George's, but importantly, the links that we've forged all over the globe. I'll give you an example of one of the areas of expertise. Professor Mike Charland has looked at neonatal sepsis. This is a life-threatening bloodstream infection that affects up to three million babies a year. The team showed that both in rich and poor countries, babies die because they are receiving treatments, but they are no longer effective. 
and our study is a major global trial to look at new treatments with a view to reducing these deaths. Another area that you may be familiar from, from the media is that of sudden cardiac death or arrest if very promptly treated for elite athletes. And we have world expertise in this area. And we're contributing in the way that we're trying to find ways, led by Professor Sanjay Sharma, again supported by a wide team, to try and examine where these electrical patterns of abnormality are in advance of the ultimate problem occurring. We have developed new recommendations that have increased detection, and particularly importantly, to get the detection rates in athletes to above 84% from a former 40%. It may be that you're more alert to the news and the words St George's University of London because of your association with us. But the effect in terms of our visibility in all forms of media during COVID was very real. And we have dramatically increased our um, public uh, speaking and information giving. Some of you may have seen the BBC Two documentary recently, Unvaccinated. But actually, for many, many months, we have taken a great deal of active place in the media, both explaining the science, but also very much involved in interpretation and communication as the facts evolved. As a university, we are growing in esteem, and a number of marks of this are, for example, Professor Tom Harris was elected a fellow of the Academy of Medical Sciences. John Friedland was appointed to the UK Health Security Agency Advisory Board. And along with the hospital, and against very stiff competition, and frankly, something of an anti-London sentiment, we were very pleased to be designated to join a very few UK centres of clinical research, which is funded. Our teaching is proudly embedded and immersed both in this clinical and research environment making our high quality education accessible to people from all backgrounds is fundamental. I hope that you've recognized already that St George's has a wonderfully diverse community and our goal is to attract talent regardless of circumstance. And this is also something that people have measured. And again, I'm delighted to say that in a recent study by the Institute of Fiscal Studies and the Sutton Trust, they looked across the many, many universities in the country. They assessed students at the age of 30 in terms of their employment and income. And on this again, we punched far above, and we were seventh, so we're very proud of that achievement. Seventh for social mobility. I think a point that's important to me is, combined with this, it's not a theoretical uh, pursuit, but I think it's essential that we educate a future workforce that is truly representative of the wider society that it serves. And I see that all the time still in my practice as a medical doctor. Omar, you've already mentioned what an embarrassingly and enormously talented group of students these are. Some of you, as well as your studies, are sports stars. Some of you are very much focused on your social life and become social stars, something of which I approve. Some of you have even started your own businesses with entrepreneurial flair or capitalized on your abilities on the stage. But as you, every one of you, you have a special talent and I thank you for everything. Many of you already have begun in, through your employment to make extraordinary contributions or through the wider community. I hope you feel you've been well taught and well prepared for the future.
and certainly to reassure you that in terms of onward employment, the last league table that I'll quote to you is that of graduate prospects. How likely you are to be employed successfully at the end of your degree. And on this particular league table, we are top in the UK. Thank you very much. So to conclude, I'd just like to bring us back to this moment of celebration. And I hope that you immerse yourself in the wonderful pride and love felt by everybody here in this theatre. You It's now time to greet former students whose achievements the university celebrates today. Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the Diagnostic Radiography Programme. <clears throat> Sharon Fampy. Aisha Abdi. Nemo Abdi. Ishmahan Abdul Qadir. Hamdi Abbi Kar. Gail Adam. Mushtaq Adan. Adeto Kumbo Adeneran. <laughs> Apologies. Olu Wei Fei Yi Kami Akin Mei Lu. And I know I got to get Yasmin Ali. <laughs> Sanet Araya. <laughs> Nima Balajam. <laughs> Harpreet Batra. Rikita Bomik. <laughs> Sanea Dilara. <laughs> Jill Desai. <laughs> Eunice Endo Mingala. Idris Gobden.
Marianne Granada. <laughs> Mohammed Haji Ali. <laughs> Mariam Hassan. <laughs> Isra Hussein. Ish <laughs> Aisha Ishik <laughs> Manway Kong <laughs> Megan Lowen <laughs> Hazra Mahid Amelia Manuel. <laughs> Faria Mia. <laughs> Iklas Mahamud. <laughs> Joel Pasquale. Miha Patel. <laughs> Darshika Prabhakaran. <laughs> Lauren Schilling. <laughs> Sarah Tucker. Anna Maria Vanava. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the healthcare practice programmes. <laughs> Nefertari Bazea. Esther Pine. Sharon Angle. Shirley Badillo. Finola Branigan Freeman. <laughs> Dominga Kabibi. <laughs> Daniswa Dawu. <laughs> Kudia Diop Mirza. Taylor Graham. <laughs> Mary Ifegwu. <laughs> Egadia Indrasweet. <laughs> Becky Sue Ishola. Shamari Lang. <laughs> Jesley Mendez. <laughs> Gemma Murphy. <laughs> Victoria Odessasan. Vera Otwoma. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sumendra Palia. Shivani Palia. Deepti Pulath Marani. Nina Underwood. Carissa Valonis. Sandra Ward. Claire Weston Bulldog. Adaniki Abadoy. Principal, moving on to the award to Graduate Certificate in Healthcare Practice, I have the pleasure to present Nima Anthony. Swan M. Kaki. Mariana Lanza. Sajana Tapper. Minu Merin Thomas. For the award of BSc Honours in Healthcare Practice, Catherine Hedges. For the award of postgraduate certificate in independent and supplementary prescribing, Chantelle Dodsworth. For the award of postgraduate diploma in healthcare practice, Shiny John. Principal, moving on to the awards for MSc healthcare practice, I have the pleasure to present Liam Cotterell. Penelope Millard. <laughs> Helen Buckley. <laughs> Cloda Delahunty. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the Department of Paramedics. <laughs> Nicole Rogan. Katie Masterson. Laura Andrews. John Cripps. Keith Hennelly. Nicola Jenkins. Chris Richardson. Jane Riley. Olivia Radfield. Atif Ali. Sharon Atkins. Imogen Bulldog. Robin Bass. Ella Beagley.
Rachel Bernison. Miranda Biggs. Melanie Bourne. Ruth Bradshaw. Matthew Broad. Craig Chitty. Andrew Chicarelli. Casey Clark. Imogen Califord. Shane Davidson Thomas. Awarded the Outstanding Endeavour Prize, Lauren Dawson Hazelwood. <laughs> Samina Din. <laughs> Poppy Donaldson. Daniel Dre. <laughs> Lindsay Eid. <laughs> Morgan Evans. <laughs> Anna Ford. Heidi Gaskins. Edward Giles. Denise Gilligan. And Marie Glover. Jessica Groover. <laughs> Laura Hackett. <laughs> Benedict Hamilton. <laughs> Amy Hansen. Rachel Harris. <laughs> Paul Harris. George Healy. Ryan Hayward. Charlotte Hill. Natalie Hobden. <laughs> Owen Jardin. <laughs> Jacob Jill. <laughs> Mahima Khan. George Lorenti. <laughs> Victoria Ludlow. <laughs> Con McGuinness. <laughs> Jessica Marley. Chloe Marshall. 
<laughs> Francine Maynard Gay. <laughs> Rebecca Mepstead. Jared Moore. Teresa Murphy. Andy Ullman. Gavin Parrish. <laughs> Phil Parrish. <laughs> Ruth Patton. <laughs> Harry Phillips. <laughs> Simon Popinski. Oliver Pond. <laughs> Joe Pond. <laughs> Ashley Reid. <laughs> Annabelle Rice. Michael Richardson. <laughs> Emma Slater. <laughs> Stephanie Smith. <laughs> hold, hold. Emily Snashaw. <laughs> Michael Stoker. Craig Strange. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Jonathan Tukey. <laughs> Deshaun Townsend. <laughs> Gary Turley. Rebecca Turner. <laughs> Jessica Wells. <laughs> Natalie Williams. <laughs> Awarded the overall achievement prize, Gareth Williams. Alexandra Wilson. <laughs> Awarded the Oliver King and Immersive Education Prize, Tia Wood. <laughs> Charlotte Woods. <laughs> Aaron Wright. Sammy Zurup. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the Occupational Therapy Programme. Sohar Shohan. <laughs> Cheyenne Ferry. <laughs> Emma Dewali.
Amanda Hughes. <laughs> Omikivi Ogbigele. <laughs> Letitia Rosario. Fedosa Youssef. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St. George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the physiotherapy program. Karen Bathal. Naomi Brady. <laughs> April Burrell. <laughs> Philip Chittock. <laughs> Andrew Crawford. Annabelle Donald. <laughs> Eleanor Durren. <laughs> Emma Elliott. <laughs> Sophia Harrington. Daniel Hermanstein. <laughs> Kirsty Jones. <laughs> Jocelyn Leslie Hoyles. And Lily. <laughs> Katia Morris. <laughs> Misha McGlone. Robert McNay. <laughs> Vanessa Ofori. <laughs> Awarded the Excellence in Student Placement Prize, Olatunde Oladi Pupo. Moe Ono. <laughs> Victoria Oshin Remy. <laughs> Theo Osin Folarin. <laughs> Libby Ostrowska. Gimet Prezilis. <laughs> Stephen Robinson. <laughs> Sabin Shrestha. <laughs> Sungavi Shrivijaya Raja. Francesca Stevenson. <laughs> Sa
Safia Stratford. Vishali Vicaria. Dominique Williams. Zilan Yaman. Principal, now moving on to the presentation of the awards for MSc Physiotherapy, I have the honour to present Dina Bailey. Thomas Barton. Zachary Boughton. Rachel Cornish. Lauren Farley. Stevie Farrow. Chris Groves. Thomas Henderson. Jason Hong. <laughs> Eleanor Dewis. <laughs> Kieran Kink. <laughs> Saratha Kalunga. Iselin Vesnes. <laughs> Clark Natoli. <laughs> Amrit Singh Panasar. <laughs> James Pidding. Sofia Rivas Alonso. <laughs> Abby Sabin. <laughs> Emma Slack. <laughs> Jasmine Ward. Vice Chancellor, I have the honour to present an additional Diagnostic Radiography Program graduate. Desiree Theodora Mitten. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all graduates from the Therapeutic Radiography Programme. <laughs> Fahima Alim. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Hannah Andrews. On Paris, awarded the highest mark for project of clinical relevance prize, Paris Chandler. <laughs> Michelle Farhan. Simra Jaweria. Sophia Khan. Oh, 
Nazira Khan. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Anushanti Mahendra Raja. Awarded the Clinical Prize, Simon May. Mohammed Rahed Mia. Well done. Hello, hello, thank you. <laughs> Hasna Mohammed. Hello, also darling. Awarded the clinical prize, Hilda Nirenda. Lillian O'Connor. <laughs> Chandni Patel. <laughs> Asmaragi. <laughs> Farwa Shah. And awarded the Learning Gain Prize, Sujeta Subentharan. We have now reached the part of the ceremony where we give an honorary award. Professor Jane Safel will say a few words and present Dr. Agri Burke with his honorary award. I'm reading this introduction on behalf of Dr. Aileen O'Brien, who's very disappointed not to be able to be here today. Chair of Council, Vice-Chancellor, graduates, family and friends. Individuals in receipt of an honorary degree from this great institution serve as outstanding role models for our students. In Dr. Agri Burke, we have another exceptional example, not only as an academic and psychiatrist, but as a pioneering campaigner against discrimination in healthcare. Born in 1943 in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, Agri moved with his parents to London in 1959, settling in Kew. In 1962, he enrolled in the University of Birmingham Medical School, one of a handful of Caribbean students there at the time. After graduation, he began his psychiatric training in Trinidad and Tobago, and then went on to teach at the University of the West Indies before returning to the University of Birmingham and completing his training as a research fellow in the Department of Psychiatry. He joined St. George's in 1977 as a senior lecturer in psychiatry and later became the first black British person to be appointed by the NHS as a consultant psychiatrist. Spending the majority of his career at St. George's, Dr. Burke became highly regarded for his extensive research on racism and mental illness. Throughout his career, and well on into retirement, he fought tireless, tirelessly against discrimination in healthcare and for the rights of marginalized people, sacrificing his own advancement to do so. In 1986, he co-wrote co -wrote a highly influential paper that shone a spotlight on racism and sexual discrimination in the selection of students at London medical schools, including our own. This prompted an inquiry by the Commission for Racial Equality and the publication of a report in 1988 
which led to positive changes in admissions processes. As a psychiatrist, he offered support to those traumatized by the infamous New Cross fire in 1981 that killed 14 young people. And he continues to work with the Young Lewisham Project, dealing with the ongoing trauma to the community. He's also currently working to raise attention to the disproportionate exclusions of black youth in schools. Dr. Burke is president of the Transcultural Psychiatric Society, a fellow of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and the 2020 recipient of the college's President's Medal. Today, I'm delighted that we add another honor in recognition of his outstanding career and campaigning. I now request you, Vice-Chancellor, by the authority of council, to admit Agri Burke as an honorary Doctor of Science of St. George's University of London. I lost my glass. <laughs> it's such a great pleasure to be here and to be honored. I came up this morning on the train, no, on the ground, I think they call it underground. And uh, as we moved towards London, we came from Putney, the color scheme changed. I wasn't alone anymore. And then I've come here, and it's nice up here, call a scheme change again. There is this struggle in Britain of making sense of who we are. For example, they say I'm a Caribbean person. And Caribbean is a whole set of people, you know. A whole set of people. Some come from here, and some come from there. But you know the name Burke come from here. And 80% of us in Jamaica, we mix up. It's no black Caribbean. It's Caribbean mix up. I go up to Scotland, and I was looking for a way to find my way around Scotland. And I met a man, and he said, you don't know anything, the clearances were worse. I said, what do you mean? He said, they get rid of us too. He said, it's not just you that suffer, we suffer too. So you have this great problem of how to make sense of a situation. During the COVID period, it's been very hard for young doctors and young nurses. I think the old ones too, older ones, also found it extremely difficult. And they had a thing, compassion fatigue. So you feel for the person you're caring for, and you feel and you feel, but a lot of them are dying. So it's a difficult situation to make sense of. Well, when we came to Britain, my family, my parents, went to school here for two years at Sheen Grammar School in, near to Putney. And you know, we had um, this motto at Sheen, enrich the time to come. And that's what I've sought to do. It don't matter really whether you're from A or B or C, if you're going to enrich the time to come, you enrich the time to come. You make sense of the situation you're in. But we are going through very difficult times and, you know, when I got this 
offered for this degree, this honor, honorary degree, I was so pleased. It seemed to me that the school that I've worked with and from and a part of was doing something beyond belief. And I must thank the school, Jenny Ham and her colleagues for this. The critical period in my training was back home. I went to Birmingham here, then I went back home. Caribbean is the home, but where is the Caribbean? It's everywhere. But I went back home. And I saw the poverty, and I saw the hardship, and I worked with it. And it irritates me a great deal that my colleagues in psychiatry believe that we have a special condition because we are Caribbean. We were slaves and then indentured workers from India and China. The old time India, you know, before they split up a bit. And it irritates me that somehow I am singled out as though I have something special about me, like aggression, I, I, I bad, you know. And the people then from the Caribbean, bad. So the, the figures show that. They confirm that, that we bad. But we're good as well. And if you have a balancing of good and bad, you may come out to better. You could come out to better. It's a terrible thing, but even in my own profession, there are these issues that need to be dealt with. I went once to a hospital in a, I don't know where it was. I used to do some work giving second opinions about what is wrong. And a nurse, a European nurse, he said to me, you better be careful. They said to us that if a patient comes in from the Caribbean, like the one you're going to see, he has or she has a certain condition. They say to us, I didn't ask any questions, I just listened. But was that really happening? Was it really happening that St. George's, for example, uh, had a period when, like other London medical schools, it was selective in who it wanted to come in. Is it really true? I think it was. And St. George has corrected it, and it's such a wonderful thing to be here, to see how well the correction has been. Progress has been made. But you know, there are other issues. And sometimes the country, the system, was getting rid of patients because they think the patients were bad for the service. A thing called repatriation. And I went home from here to the Caribbean to see what happened to the people who were being sent home because they were repatriated. They did badly. Unless, like a mother, had no support from a grandmother, and went home to get the support. Those did well. But compassion is such an important issue in life that one can't just punish a patient or punish a person because they're getting on bad. And so we come back to this issue of the prison. Is it likely that the majority of patients in prison are suffering from mental disorder? It looks so. So how do we distinguish we ask the judge to say, he not so well. No, the judge says, he bad. He bad. He going to go to prison. And we're going to give him a few years extra for that, his badness. So we have to move, and hopefully, the student body here, as doctors, new doctors, will move into the position of distinguishing between he bad or she bad to I wonder what's really gone wrong, and how can we help? Even if he bad, or she bad, she needs help, he needs help. I was working in, uh, 
St. Albans, a hospital called Hill End. I think they close it now. Hill End. It's a nice place to go here. And uh, worked for a short period in a hospital called Harper Berry, where they had persons with mental um, problems. Problems to do with intelligence and behavior. And a very important member of the profession, Professor Lionel Penrose, now deceased, looked at the early features of that population that were excluded as recently as the 70s. They had been excluded. And here in London, we had a professor called Jack Tisard. He was very interested in safeguarding. That means that the child, the children, the babies and the young children are well cared for, not neglected, not abused, and given nutrition, the breast sometimes, sometimes a bottle. And he did some wonderful work because it made it clear that the people who suffer problems in that early period of life are likely to suffer problems later on as well. So we have to see that group as a, a group to be attended to. Those are the experiences for me were very important because the idea that psychiatry is just mental illness, schizophrenia and severe depression, that's not, it doesn't make sense. You've seen in COVID, again you've seen in COVID, so many people have gone down. Both staff caring for them, relatives caring for them, and the patients themselves. So who is the patient? All of us. So we must find a way to deal with ourselves as well. You know, sometimes I can't understand someone from Bangladesh or Philippines and so we set up a group in Tuting, an interpreting service. And it was so sad when, with funding at a premium, we had to shut it down. How can you understand someone who you can't even understand? You know, it doesn't make sense. So you need an interpreting service or some way to communicate with that person. And so these challenges have been so important to me and uh, I share with you some of the issues that one had to deal with. But poverty, real poverty, economic poverty is a, it's a bad thing and it causes mental distress and disorder. Poverty is poverty. It's one of the worst things in the world. Perhaps it is the worst. And we're going through a phase where the service we present, the students here will have to be proud of and part of, is suffering because there's a struggle between poverty and wealth. And who defines which one we belong to? Or perhaps both. That is the challenge for the future. To find ways to reduce the consequences of poverty and to eventually reduce its existence, its severity, and the problems it presents. It is such a pleasure to see all sorts of people here coming and getting degrees and um, certificates. I thank you, Madam President, for your kindness. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St. George's University of London, may I present all the postgraduate and research awards from the Graduate School.
For the awards of Postgraduate Certificate in Healthcare and Biomedical Education, I have the honour to present Stuart Crow. <laughs> Peter Tamoni. <laughs> For the awards of Master of Research in Biomedical Sciences, I have the honour to present Prince Ajay Ie. Fahima Amini. <laughs> Aisha Butt. <laughs> Hilary Eke. Salma Mujib. <laughs> For the awards of Master of Research in Translational Medicine, I have the honor to present Tanya Awal. <laughs> Felix Effa. Royan Kahiri. <laughs> Nafisa Adamu Nayu. <laughs> Parisha Raminashat. Awarded the Principal's Prize, Ratna Romi. <laughs> Awarded the Postgraduate Certificate in Genomic Medicine, Dipankar Chowdhury. <laughs> For the awards of Master of Science, Genomic Medicine, I have the honor to present Alfonso Di Gorgogescu. Amy Glossop. <laughs> Violet Gomba. <laughs> Francis Kiernan. <laughs> Venetia Surijadadu. Alisa Stankovic. <laughs> For the awards of Master of Science in Global Health, I have the honor to present Temitope Kenafalobi. <laughs> Jessica Loeb. <laughs> Sepan Malek. Victoria Scott. <laughs> Carol Masango. <laughs> For the awards of Masters of Science in Sports Cardiology, I have the honor to present Mark Avella. Arebola Moreno Antonio Luis. <laughs> Clea Simoni Sabino Sosa Kolubu. <laughs> Vasilios Deliandis. Vice-Chancellor, for the award of Doctor of Medicine for a thesis entitled 
the cardiovascular and renal effects of dietary salt, the role of serum sodium concentration, I have the honor to present to you Nicholas Cole. Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Modeling Antibody-Mediated Modulation of Simian Immunodeficiency Virus Colorectal Infection. I have the honor to present to you Kelly De Costa. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Practitioner Permeability and the Resolution of Practice Uncertainties, a Grounded Theoretical Perspective of Supervision for Allied Health Professionals, I have the honour to present to you Deborah Harding. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Evasion of the innate apoptotic response by classical swine fever virus, N-terminal autoprotease. I have the honor to present to you Samuel Hardy. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Functional Studies for Deciphering the Lymphatic Role of EPHB4, a protein associated with lymphatic-related hydrops fatalis. I have the honor to present to you Christina Carapoliu. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor, that concludes the graduate awards we presented at today's ceremony. I now invite Professor Jane Safel to lead us in the St. George's Pledge. The Pledge. Um, the Pledge is taken by all our graduates on graduation day, and it's an opportunity to collectively recognize the core values that guide us in our professional lives. Reading the pledge aloud is one of the most powerful moments in the academic year. By taking the pledge together, we acknowledge values that are central to all our endeavors, such as seeking help, avoiding harm, respecting one another's rights, and the importance of warmth, compassion, and understanding. So I now invite all graduates who've graduated today to stand up and we will read together the pledge which you will find on the last page of your programme. I think there are still some people refinding their seats so if you all make sure that you've got sight of the last page of your programme we will now read aloud together I pledge myself and promise I will respect the learning and achievements of those professionals in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply to benefit humanity all measures which are required. I will remember that there is an art to all professional endeavours and that warmth, compassion and understanding may equal any other intervention. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call on my colleagues when the knowledge or skills of another is needed. I will respect the privacy of my fellow human beings, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, I must tread with care where others place their trust in me. I will relate my work to the human state, which may affect a person's family and economic stability. I will remember that I remain a member of society 
with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, including the most vulnerable and marginalized. I make this declaration solemnly, freely, and in humility. Grad graduates may now sit, and I invite Christine Swaby, Chair of Council, to close our ceremony today. Thank you, Jane. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. What a wonderful morning of celebration that we've all had. I think made all the more special after the deprivations we all suffered in COVID and not being able to meet face to face in such large groups. So it's really very special to be here with you. And I feel really privileged and lucky to have joined a little bit of your celebrations. So talking to the students, many of you of course have completed what will be one step on quite a long, lifelong perhaps journey of uh, studying and learning more things because you're going into professions that require that continuous engagement and continuous development. And I really do applaud and acknowledge the commitment that you've made in setting out on this journey and the positive impact your professionalism and expertise is going to bring to the benefit of society. How fortunate we all are that you're here today embarking on that journey. You should be enormously proud, and, and we're all very proud at St. George's. As many of you will know, it's got a very long history, tracing its roots back to 1733. And there are many very notable and famous clinicians who have traveled through the doors of St. George's, to name just a couple, Edward Jenner, who created the smallpox vaccine, which was really Changed, changed the course of vaccines in this world, and Henry Gray, whose textbook on anatomy is still used today. So as alumni of St. George's, you are now the guardians and the inheritors of that unique and really proud tradition. And of course, we don't just celebrate that because we're proud of the past. We think about some of those people as the inspiration for what may be achieved in the future. And seeing all of you come up to collect your degrees today and knowing how science is moving at really quite an astonishing rate in terms of progress and knowledge, it will be interesting to see how many renowned practitioners or groundbreaking researchers we have amongst us already today. But before we close today's ceremony, I would just like to um, build on Omar's thanks to a, a whole range of people and just single out, first of all, if I may, ask you to uh, join me in saying thank you to the wonderful musicians who've played constantly while people have come across the stage. I know many of you will appreciate that organizing events like this relies on the hard work behind the scenes of so many people, many too many to mention here, but I would ask that you just say thank you to all the people at St. George's and indeed at the Barbican who have helped us so wonderfully make things run smoothly this morning. And finally, and because I think it's most importantly, I'm, I'm going to repeat and go back on some of Omar's comments and, and say that I think we would all like to acknowledge the role that family and friends have played in helping you and supporting you in so many different ways achieve your aspirations of moving forward and advancing your careers in healthcare, medicine, and science. Your achievement today is also very much their achievement. 
Could I please ask everybody who's graduated today to stand up and please show your appreciation, not just for your loved ones who've accompanied you here today, but anybody that you may hold in your hearts and minds who has helped support you in the journey that has got to this marvellous point of achievement. So please join me in thanking them. You may sit. So, um, so you are now fully fledged members of the St George's community. Please remember to stay in touch. Please visit our alumni and development team outside. We, we love to stay in touch with our alumni. We love to hear your news and we hope you know, we will be touching base with you as you continue your journey of learning and education over many years in the future. So congratulations to you all, and if I can ask everybody to stand now, we will conclude with the national anthem, and then if you could remain standing as the academic procession leaves. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 